Water farms and two really important rivers. It's time for the top 10 bizarre things that happened in Mesopotamia. Number 10, the gardens. The Hanging Gardens of Babylon were one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. They were described as a remarkable feat of engineering, with an ascending series of tiered gardens containing a wide variety of trees, shrubs, and vines, resembling a large green mountain constructed of mud bricks. Okay, yeah, the pyramids of Giza are very impressive, but just imagine this. Imagine how beautiful the city must have been with this monument. It's bizarre for the time because of just how magnificent it must have been. Sadly, there is not much evidence of the garden's existence, which leaves some people to believe it didn't exist at all. There is nothing left of the structure or any text from Babylon that even describe such a luscious garden. I like to believe it is real, as sometimes we need nice things in history to remind us that we're not all bloodthirsty warmongers. Number 9. It's a hard knock life for us. As great as our DNA is, sometimes things can get a little confusing in the process. Sometimes humans are born with defects. The human thing to do is understand, love, and respect everyone. This is something that the people of Mesopotamia did not practice. If a child was born with a defect or it just wasn't to their liking, they would oftentimes sacrifice the child. This is a kind of heinous act that just makes my skin crawl just thinking about it. I like to think there's a lesson to be learned with history. It gets a little messed up sometimes, but drowning kids? Ooh, I don't know. But yet again, I'm standing here as a second-rate Chris Farley without a joke or a lesson to be learned. I guess for all the kids out there in Babylon, just watch your back because you might end up in a big river, but not the swimming kind. You might end up at the bottom of the river, and that's, that's not where you want to be. Wait till they find out that I have dyslexia and asthma. Number 8. Under the Mattress Honestly, when I heard about this one, I was a little shocked, but it makes sense, I guess. So, wind the clock back to the 1980s. Ronald Reagan was in the office, the Noid was around to save your pizzas, and hair. Ooh, man, the hair. The hair was crazy. I don't know what everyone was thinking. But what some young teenagers remember is a certain magazine that they had to hide under their mattress. A magazine that had centerfolds of women with interesting clothing options, or lack thereof. Well, this wasn't just an 80s staple, but might have just started back in the days between the two rivers. That's right, Mesopotamia had some rather interesting art. Art that may or may not feature a certain activity. Excuse me, it's <clears throat> getting a little warm in here. These are pieces that are often displaying humans in interesting positions. And, well, I'm not sure where you'd hang these. In the kitchen? In the oldie living room? In the bedroom? Mom, don't look under my mattress. I totally don't have artistic stone carvings of people doing it. Ugh, leave me alone. Number seven, Hammurabi Justice. King Hammurabi might not be someone you've heard of, but to the law and law study, it's basically Justice 101. King Hammurabi was known for a few things, but perhaps best known for his code of laws. An eye for an eye, which basically means you get what you give. Steal from a merchant, merchant takes from you. Or basically, you lose a hand. Make the punishment fit the crime. This is the best that we can come up with, which back in the day seemed to work for a while. So, okay. However, an eye for an eye will make the world blind. Or just have a ton of people with only one eye. 50% off glasses, maybe? I don't know. Number six, the tower of what? Whether you like it or not, we like to build things. It's just what we do, and we love to build them high. Think of all the towering monuments we build as humans that display our engineering prowess. The Empire State Building, the CN Tower, and the tower of piled up laundry in my bedroom I'm definitely gonna put away. I just haven't gotten around to it yet, Mom. Leave me alone. Usually constructed of the finest wood, brick, and steel, However, one king in Mesopotamia had a different idea to scare off any attackers and flex what might be the weirdest flex ever, but okay. He made a tower of flesh. Again, for the people who are watching this while eating, a tower of flesh, human flesh. That must have been the worst pile of filth and disgust that this earth has ever seen. This is the same kind of thing that turns people. Origin story starter pack. It's what turns Colonel Kurtz into Marlon Brando. This tower of flesh. What have you done to my boy? A carrier pigeon brought me a message when I was practicing a really bad Marlo Brando impression. And it was from the chief. And he said it ain't it. Number five, sins of medical history. If you're like me, then you believe in karma. What goes around comes around, baby. So when the fine people of Mesopotamia became ill, doctors had but one answer. Well, you see here, Jim, you angered the gods and that's why you've been sick. I would certainly smarten up before the gods give your whole family dysentery. Yep, that's right. They believe people were responsible for their own illnesses. 
Didn't pray last week? Well, that's why you have a fever, Marie. Took a little extra grain for your starving family? That's why you have an incurable sickness, Bob. Now, given the times and that this is one of the first times we gave civilization a good try, I guess that makes sense. Personally, I prefer the doctors who went to medical school and, you know, practice actual medicine. But all right, if that's how things are going, we're doing that. Okay, all right. Number four, Sumerian Suds. Finally, something fun to talk about. The civilizations in Mesopotamia were pretty good at farming. It was kind of a big deal. So was wheat. You know what that means, sports fans? Beer, sweet wheat ale. As a Canadian, there is nothing more I enjoy than sitting down on a couch with my buddies and just sending it with some beers, buddy. Is a hockey game really a hockey game if the Leafs aren't losing? And if I don't have an ice cold beer in my hands, well, the fine people of Samaria felt the same way. I mean, there was no ice hockey and, and the idea of two Canucks sitting down on the couch with beer wasn't a thing, but the beer was, yeah. The Euphrates River wasn't the only golden liquid flowing back then. I say golden because they probably had to pee in the river. Their exact brewing process is still a mystery, but it may be linked to the goddess of brewing, Ninkasi. The beer was used as a commodity as well as something to kick back and relax. Number three, witchcraft. So you've got yourself currency, farming, jobs, and economy. Your civilization is becoming the cradle of modern human life. You've got everything you need, right? Well, you'd be wrong. How about fear and panic? Yes, that's right. Witchcraft was something that was happening all the way back in Mesopotamia. I mean, witches are scary, right? Well, while there may be hearsay about witches and the voodoo that they do, it's speculated that from surviving cuneiform texts that some of these witchy rituals were meant to help people and cure illnesses. So a doctor tells you that you've sinned and you're sick, so then you need to go to the local witch's hut so that they can cure what ails you. Yeah, never mind. That, that makes total sense. That's a great system. That makes so much sense. That doesn't make any sense at all. I'm sorry I'm yelling. Number two, the dry times. It's well known that the civilizations between the Tigris and the Euphrates River flourished, ushering in the beginnings of many ideas of our civilization. However, as the rivers made land fertile for the agricultural revolution, the people who lived there were truly at the mercy of mother nature. One good example of this was the Akkadian Empire, who was really doing good thousands of years ago. However, it's speculated now that what ended the Akkadian Empire was a centuries-long drought. While the rivers provided the irrigation required to grow food and to grow cities, they were also unreliable as floods and droughts were just how things went. The randomness of these events was thought to be punishments or blessings of gods. That seemed to be the only logical explanation, right? That makes sense, sure. Number one, the epic epic. The epic of Gilgamesh just may be the first story to ever be story. Besides my bad English, it's a great tale of Herculean proportions, building a massive wall to protect the city of Uruk, and after many adventures, setting out to find the secret of immortality. This is one of the earliest writings ever, like ever, ever. So that makes it immediately cool. Not as good as Twilight, but a close second in my mind. Team Edward. That's gonna wrap it up for me today, guys. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe here at Bumblebee. And if you too wanna go on an epic like Gilgamesh, then check out my socials linked down in the description. Stay sweet, my little honeybees.